Welcome to Session 19 of Complexity Explorer's MESA Tutorial, Agent-Based Modeling in Python. In this session, we'll be looking at the data collector at the agent level. We'll be collecting information about each agent for every time set step, and in this case, building out the trade network uh, of our agent population. So let's get started. As usual, please open up your IDE or Google Colab instance. So, once we get started, we'll, as usual, make sure that your sugar-map.txt file is loaded, either by uploading to your uh, your folders uh, or by mounting it with your Google Drive. For this one, we'll import another library uh, uh, as one of our dependencies, which is a very common Python library for networks known as Network X. Right. So the typical way you import Network X is import Network X as NX, uh, and then we'll run that. And we then have our helper functions, which now consist of get distance, flatten, and geometric mean, which we built in, those two we built in our last session. Uh, and then our resource class is sugar and spice. We also have our trader agent class, uh, which is probably our longest class uh, that has our agents maneuver and trade. Then we have our sugar scape model, where we instantiate our model. And this is where we also create an instance of our data collector, which is right now collecting model reports. And we then call one instance of our SugarScape uh, and then run it. And to collect agent level data now, we're going to go back to our self.dataCollector attribute. Okay? And we're going to add in the keywords to differentiate between model reporters uh, and agent reporters. You can see here we're doing Mason.dataCollector, which calls datacollection.ty file, which you can see uh, in Mason's GitHub link or your local uh, install version. And we just add the keyword model underscore reporters. This then takes as its parameter the dictionary we built in our last lesson, which uh, collects the number of traders, our trade volume, and a price. So then after the dictionary, at the end of the curly braces, or the end of our dictionary parameter, we just have to put a comma, right, and then we'll add the keyword agent reporters. So agent underscore reporters. Agent reporters, similar to model reporters, will then be a dictionary where the key is effectively the column uh, uh, on our pandas data frame. Right? So we do open curly braces to create a dictionary, and then we create the key for the uh, data that we want to collect. Right? And this we'll call it trade network, right? so make sure it's in um, parentheses uh, to turn into a string. Uh, and then that has to equal some attribute that we collect against. So again, we'll use the lambda function, and we'll use A, which indicates they're collected at the agent level. And, so, and then get trade, we're going to make a helper function for this, uh, and, and then we're going to pass in the agent object uh, so the model can collect against that. Right? And all that's handled uh, by, the, by the data collector class that's uh, part of Mesa. So now that we've done that, we need to build the helper function for getting information from our trader agents. The challenge is that we have uh, different types of agents, and the agent collector collects against every type of agent. Uh, in this case, however, as we're trying to look at the trade network, only the trader agent has the attribute trade partners. So we need to make sure we'll, we don't get an error by trying to collect trade partners against sugar or spice. Uh, so it's a fairly simple function. Build you know, def dot get trade in our helper function second section uh, we pass in an agent object uh, and then we see if that agent object uh, is a trader agent and if so then we return trade partners otherwise we return none so if type right, agent equals equals trader with a capital T because it's our agent class then can be return agent.partners. Correction, agent.trade underscore partners. Now you remember from our previous one, this is just a list of uh, unique IDs that we collect from our agents. Otherwise, we just return none. Right? So that means it's a sugar or spice agent, uh, and we can ignore it. And then we add some uh, comments so we can easier to understand later, right? It says for agent reporter and data collector. And 
and then we're just filtering through our agents uh, so that way we return trade partners. The trick here is if we didn't do this, uh, we try to collect just trade partners against everything, we get an error when it reaches a sugar or spice agent because they don't have uh, the attribute trade partners. So after our comments are done, uh, now we can run the model and start to analyze the data that comes up. And as a reminder, the trade partners, so how are we going to build out this network? The trade partners uh, is just the list of unique agent IDs that we can use to build out our network because the agent IDs have to be unique. All right, so we run those, make sure we don't have any syntax errors. Uh, run our model class again to make sure we don't have a syntax error, uh, and then we run the model. Okay. As previously, this will take you know, 30 seconds to a minute to run as we run it through 1,000 steps of our kind of default model parameters. And again, the next lesson, uh, we'll be switching uh, to Batch Runner. We'll run multiple uh, different types of models. All right. So uh, what we're going to do is we put on our analyzed data. We have results from our uh, model data variables. So now we're going to create a, a data frame called agent underscore results. And then we'll, it's very similar to the previous to model reports where it's model dot data collector and then get underscore agent underscore vars underscore data frame. Model vars, this will create a pandas data frame uh, that has all the attributes uh, that we loaded into our data collector uh, so we can begin to analyze it. And again, if you want to see that code, uh, you can just go to the, your local instance or go to Data Collector and find the Git Agent Vars data, data Frame function, uh, and then that will show you how the, how the Python code is being executed. All right, so we'll put in our comment. Right, this cell will retrieve agent level results. All right, which, depending on your population, can get quite large and what you're collecting against. And now with this one, as because of our function that we did previously, all right, we have a lot of nuns, right? Every time I collect against sugar and spice, it returned a nun uh, because those agents don't have the trade partner's attribute. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to filter those out immediately because we don't need them. So we're going to do agent results again, and that's going to equal the agent results data frame, right? And then open bracket agent underscore results and then open bracket trade network which is the uh, key for the value that we have right? and then it's going to be dot not null okay now this function comes from pandas where we're just filtering through uh, our agent results data frame and any value that is a none uh, we're going to filter up all right uh, so we run that get an error Right, and we get a key error because uh, it's trade space network, not trade underscore. Okay, so I fixed that. Right, and you can see here now we got so you got your step, and then you have your agent ID. And uh, sometimes they're trading, or many times they don't have any agents that they traded with. Other times uh, they uh, do. Right, so now we got the things we need for our uh, trade network. Right, as you can see there, I forgot to run the results section, so I ran that cell. All right, so you're still getting reasonable results. We're starting to see more density around one in the price. All right, we know that our bar graph is actually not the best visualization, so we can skip that. Go to our vertical line graph. All right, so you can see, okay, we're getting reasonable results uh, in our trade volume. And now we want to build out uh, our, uh, we want to take that the agent results and now build out a network and run some network statistics against it. All right, so to do this, uh, we just first we got to build a network object. This is no different than what we did previously where we created a uh, instance of our model object uh, and then uh, ran code against that. So per network X kind of convention, you do nx.graph, right? And then uh, I highly recommend you pull up uh, the documentation. They've got great documentation with very easy to understand tutorials, right? Uh, and extensive descriptions about uh, how you run their code, right? All right, but in this case, we got g equals nx.graph, right? So just big G for a big graph. 
So this is our creating our uh, network instance that we can now fill uh, uh, with our network of traders. Okay, so this is just creating a graph object. And now we want to instantiate that graph object with each one uh, of our trader agents. Okay, so to do this, we just uh, have to go through the schedule, collect out all the traders and our random activation by type schedule, right, and add each of those unique IDs as a node. Okay, so we just do uh, g.add underscore nodes underscore from, and then list of open parentheses model for our agent model that we created dot schedule that agents underscore by underscore type open brackets capital T for trader close brackets dot keys right so our keys are just the unique agent ID numbers uh, from each of our agents run that so it engage syntax error other errors right and now that we've created that we want to create an edge list from uh, to link those nodes together based off who traded with who all right now uh, so to get this information, we're going to iterate through the pandas uh, data frame rows, right? So it has essentially like a dictionary where it's the index of, of the row and then the row itself, right? In agent results dot iter rows and then open close a parentheses since it's a pandas function, All right? So we're just iterating through each row. And then in each one of those rows, I see up here, right? And then in each one of those rows, uh, we're going to pull in that list of inf uh, list of trade partners, uh, so that way we can build out the network. Okay, and so we, as usual, we don't necessarily call something if it's no, uh, not useful. So if the length of the row and that's the uh, and then the column we want, which is trade network. So row open brackets trade network in parentheses is greater than zero. That means that they have that they traded with some other agent. Right? Then we want to add a link between that between the nodes. All right. So then we're going to iterate through that list uh, of agents. So before agent in should be row open bracket trade underscore network in parentheses. Right, so now we're iterating through the list that came out as a result. Right, if it's uh, if it has any length to it greater than zero, and then we do add it. Then we're going to add an edge. So from our graph object G, we do the uh, network X function, add underscore X. Right, and then we use the IDX, which is uh, uh, effectively a list where you have zero, which is the row, and then one, which is the agent uh, number. So that's why you got IDX open brackets one, right? And then agent, right? which is the agent number in that list we're iterating through. So we run that. Now, if you have any question about what I just said, I always recommend you take a pause, right? And print, uh, you know, print out uh, those various variables so you can see the underlying data structure that we're using. Okay. Now that we've created our network, right, we can uh, do some. Uh, network statistics just to see what our network looks like. All right, so I'm just going to use um, primitive network X functions. All right, we're going to look at the node connectivity. And do we have uh, how many networks do we got? How connected are we? You know, what's our average clustering statistic? So do the diameter. How far does it take to get from one side of the network to another? Uh, and then we'll look at the global efficiency of our network, which is a metric for uh, how easily information can traverse uh, across the network. So these are just some simple network statistics. Uh, you can do different ones. Again, if you look at the network X documentation, uh, you can pretty much run whichever uh, one is applicable, right? So we got what uh, network connectivity, got one giant node, everybody's connected to each other, right? The average clustering is 0.4, right? The diameter is six, right? And then again, any one of these you can look up uh, in network X, so if I search uh, average clustering, then I could go to the average clustering uh, algorithm. It tells me how it's calculated and even gives references uh, onto how they uh, made the decisions they made to calculate it that way. Okay. It's just an example. Uh, 
uh, on on how to analyze uh, the potential trade network, right? Another uh, typical thing you might do uh, is the degree distribution, right? So what's the degree distribution of our agents? Right? Um, and so we're gonna do list comprehension again, uh, and so we use D for um, degree four n comma D. Uh, in g dot degree, so uh, we do the g dot degree function. It uh, is really two things that come out, like key and value, your node, and then your degree distribution, right? So we want to iterate through and collect all our degree distributions, and then we'll just put that into a histogram. So call plt dot hist, right? And we'll pass in uh, our local variable degree. Uh, this is not right. Because I did n, which is the key, and not the value of degree. So the d for n comma d. Right now, this is this looks right for a degree distribution. Right? As you can see, it's small numbers of agents have effectively 15 or less. Right, and then a f uh, or lots of agents have 15 or less. Right, and then a few agents have a lot of connections uh, in the 60s or 70s. Right, so we got a so you get a heavy tail degree distribution. Uh, of how trading has worked, where a lot of agents are trading with a few people and a few agents are trading with a lot of people. We can also use their draw function right, to kind of get an image of what the network looks like. And they have lots of different options for this, uh, but this at least shows you the functionality. Right? So you can just go back into the documentation, look up draw, and it'll give you all sorts of different options you can use to make the graph, uh, you know, per, rep, visualize it the way uh, that you would like. Okay? So, that represents session 19, where we collect agent level data and start to build out views and run statistics uh, against the trade network of our agents. All right, thanks for coming. And in our last lesson, we'll do batch runner, where we do parameter sweeps to see what kind of results we get and run each uh, model multiple times. See you next time.